Hi everybody, welcome back. So today I am going to embark on kind of a project I've had in mind for a while but haven't wanted to do. And I just told somebody here a couple days ago in the comment section I wasn't going to do it because I didn't have any of this. But my lovely wife bought me a roll for my birthday. This is Gizmo Dorks. See if the camera will cooperate with us. Gizmo Dorks 1.75 millimeter polycarbonate filament and it's transparent. And I'm kind of killing the two projects with one stone with this. One is the polycarbonate, and the other is the transparent part of it. I've kind of got something in mind for that, which I think will be a lot of fun. And um, we'll really put this polycarbonate to some kind of a decent test. Yeah, maybe not, but kind of, sort of, who knows. Anyway, I've heard this is very, very difficult to print with, that it requires very high temperatures at the nozzle, so we're going to be going to the Ender 3 with the all-metal hot end. And I've also heard that it sticks to nothing. So I have had really good luck with the mirror and the hairspray, and it's 70 degrees Celsius. The uh, mirror hairspray bed is very sticky. So that's where I'm going to start. Other than that, I'm just going to have to experiment with speeds and nozzle temperatures. I'll probably start with a fairly slow print speed, 30 to 40, and um, we'll go from there. So I have no idea what we're doing, and that's kind of half the fun of it, isn't it? So I'm going to go over to my Ender 3, and I'm going to see if I can't work up some settings at work and um, give me some kind of small part acceptably, and then we will move on from there. I will be back. Okay, so let's take a look at the part that I'm going to be printing today. I really wanted something just simple, so I got on Thingiverse and I found this little coin paper clip cup type of thing, and you're looking at it at 50% its size. I'll put a link to it below if you really want a coin paper clip tray, but whatever. <clears throat> and for the real printing, I'm going to start out with my nylon settings, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go from 265 to 275. And that's the only thing I'm going to change. But before I do that, I know what the first question you're going to ask me is. Can I print polycarbonate on my stock Ender 3? So before I even begin this, I went over to my Ender 3, my stock one, the one with the stock hot end. It's been flashed to Marlin, but it's still got the stock hot end on it. And I printed one at 250 degrees. And I want to show it to you because we'll get this out of the way right off the bat. That's what it looks like. And you'll see the layers are separating. Um, this was just all loose around it. This is the skirt. But all of this, there was about three times more of this loose stuff around it. So here we go right off the bat. The answer is no, you cannot print polycarbonate on a stone stock Ender 3. 250, 255 degrees is not hot enough. So that's out of the way. If you do not want to upgrade your Ender 3, I would highly suggest you stick with PETG or PLA. If you need something stronger, maybe try one of the stronger versions of, of PLA. But PETG should do you pretty good for most things that regular PLA won't. So, moving on. Will an Ender 3 with an, with Flash 2 mar stock marlin with an all-metal hot end print polycarbonate? So... As I said, we, I started with my nylon settings, except I went from 265, which is what I was printing at the nylon at, and I went to 275. So let's take a look at my first one. This is what the first one I got looks like. Let me go back to webcam here. This is what the first one I, first one I got looks like. And yeah, this kind of color is kind of hard to see. It's got a little bit of stringing in it. Um, and I've got some layers that aren't really very good i mean it's a definite improvement over um over 250 degrees but it still doesn't cut it so we're going to change these settings and we're going to try again okay for this next one i upped the print temperature from 275 to 285 and I upped the build plate temperature from 70 to 90. One thing I didn't show you, let me go back to that one I just showed you. One thing, oops, switch back to webcam here so I can show you. One thing, and I'm sorry, I'm not showing you the things printing. We all know what printers look like and we all know what Ender 3s look like. So one thing I didn't show you was the bottom. The bottom is supposed to be flat. The corn, and this is the same problem I had with ABS. The corners are curling up. 
And you can see some time has passed between when I showed you the box and told you what I was going to do to today because my thumb is healed completely up. So anyway, you can see how it's curling. And this, like I said, this is the same problem I had with the ABS. That's why I raised the the um, bed temperature from 70 to 90. So let's take a look at the one I got when I raised it from 70 to 90. There's that one. And you're going to see not a whole lot of difference. I'm still not flat on the bottom. The corners and the edges are still curling up. But um, going, from, going from 270 to 80 made my layers a little better, but not a heck of a lot, really. It's still... This side over, well, no, it's not either. It's still not really getting good layer adhesion. And, of course, it's not sticking to the bed. So let's make another change, and you know what? Let's give it another try and see what happens. So let me also jump in here and tell you what I mean by, more I mean by the bottom is not flat. I mean, it's kind of obvious. You can see the bottom is almost got a bow shape to it all the way across. Here's what one looks like printed out of PLA. See the bottom there? You see the difference? See how flat this one is compared to this one? So that's my problem. I'm bowing. It's pulling up. It's curling up away from the build plate. And these were printed on the, both on the same Ender 3 too, by the way. The one with the all-metal hot end. And the, the height is actually the same if you measure from the middle here to the top of the outside, but the it's curling up. And, of course, that's no bueno. That's causing me problems. Here's also a calibration cube I printed, X, Y, and Z. You can barely see the, the, the letters in it, but you can see the bottom of it curled as well. Top's nice and flat, and I didn't have any other problem. It's a nice, solid part. I mean, it really is a nice, solid part, so I think my temperatures are in the ballpark, but let's try and see if we can't get a better one anyway. Okay, so for this one, I have raised my print temperature up from 285 to 295, and I have maxed the build plate out, or what I feel is probably maxed for the Ender 3 at 110. I'd probably run it higher than that, but I'm not really comfortable with it. I also slowed, and you'll notice these are my retraction settings for the um, for the all-metal hot end, too. I also changed my print speed from my nylon settings from 40 to 30. It hopes that would look better. Let's take a look at it and see what we got. This one's pretty interesting. I mean, it's a failure, but it's an interesting failure. And there it is. And look at the bottom of it. Look what happened on the bottom of it. And, um, it, and I have two of these that look almost identical. And, um, yeah, that's the right one. So, at first I didn't understand what happened down here. I had a, a, a subscriber have a similar problem, gosh, quite a number of months ago, and I was trying to help him diagnose this, and I don't know whatever happened, but I don't know if he figured out, but I thought, oh, well, God, I wonder if I did something to the board, what, but I was getting this really neat rotation as it was going up. But um, the walls are a little bit sturdier, Quite, actually quite a bit, but I can still break them if I try hard enough. But they are considerably sturdier than the other one, but we're still curling on the bottom. It's still not staying stuck to the bed. So, my next bright idea was, it obviously I think this thing needs to be enclosed, and the bed temperature needs to be hotter. I'm not really comfortable right now raising the bed temp above 110, but I had a bright idea. I've kind of got a heat box. I've got this thing called the garage, and it's summertime in Arizona. It is about 100 degrees in my garage right now. So I took it out into the garage. I let it, the temperature normal. It's 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the garage. Let me, it's not 100 degrees Celsius in the garage, obviously. It's 100 degrees in freedom units. Okay, don't get, your, don't get upset over that. All right. So I took it out in the garage, and I printed the same thing again same temperature and I had basically the exact same results and you can see it once again I got this funky interesting rotation now the sidewalls in this part are darn solid I'm actually I got a little bit of a separation there but they're pretty darn solid that's actually the best one of the bunch I think that if I hadn't had this weird rotation I'd have probably had a pretty darn solid part 
but I'm still getting the um, a, some of the curling. It wasn't as bad in this one. But as I was looking at this, it dawned on me what happened that made that rotation. When the edges curl up like that, I've only got a little bit of contact in the middle. And at 110 degrees Fahrenheit, or excuse me, 110 degrees Celsius on the bed, the hairspray is gooey. It's not solid. It's not crisp like it would be with PLA. You know, when it cools, you get that crack and it pops loose. It's gooey. So what was happening was, is it was printing, and as the, as the head was going around like this, every time it would go around, it would shift it slightly and slightly and slightly. So it was actually moving the bottom around on the print bed. So what conclusions have I drawn from this? A, the people who said this stuff doesn't stick to much of anything is right. Mirror and hairspray is not going to work because I'm having to have a bed temperature well above what the hairspray is going to be a functional glue at. It's really best down at 50 to 70. I've even had it successful up to 80 and 90, but really 50 to 70 is its, its sweet spot. And you really need a hotter bed with this than 50 to 70. The, the nozzle temperature that I can reach with my modified Ender 3, I think if I could get the, the bottom to adhere to the bed, I think my 295 to 300 degree nozzle temperature is probably going to print me a pretty solid part because this is very solid. I'm trying to crush it here with my fingers and I really can't do it. The only spot it really is bad at is in here where I was getting this rotation. And um, I really can't blame the temperature or the material on that. So a couple of problems here. I need to get the bed temperature above 110, I think, or I need to find a better way to adhere it. Also, I think I need to enclose it. But the problem with enclosing it is the Ender 3 has all of its all of its electronics built onto the machine, including the power supply. If I enclose it, I enclose those, and I'm not sure how good an idea that is. So that's where this is going to end the day. I'm going to come. I'm going to revisit this in the near future. But for right now, I'm kind of I'm kind of dead in the water. So you cannot print polycarbon on a stock Ender 3. Can you print it on a modified Ender 3? Yeah, well, I'm thinking it's probably possible. So where am I going from here? I need a better bed surface. I need a better way to get things to stick to the bed up at 100, 110 degrees Celsius. And I need to see if it's practical to raise the Ender 3 bed up above 100 or 110. So first step, I have something floating around that I have been thinking about doing for a while. This has been here about the same time the polycarbonate has been here. And this is a different control board. This is a 32-bit control board for the Ender 3. And this one is made by a company called Big Tree Tech. And I had originally planned on putting this in the, in the stock enclosure, but now I'm thinking maybe it's time to break the electronics out of the Ender 3, off the, off the chassis of the Ender 3. So, going to think about all this and going to decide where I think is best to go. And maybe I ought to really think, do I really need to print polycarbonate? I think the answer to that is no, but I think I want to. So that's it for today. I hope we've learned something. I hope you've enjoyed my failures. <laughs> if, um, if you have, please like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me comments. And um, I'll catch you guys the next time. Talk to you later. Bye.